and I miss her so much when she's not here. I'm just going to tie a string on her and make sure that every service that she's present. Okay, Roxanne? <laughs> Amen. Luke 32. Notice verse uh, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Do you have an answer to that question? What's your answer this morning? Notice verse 17. The answer that Jeremiah gives. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Stretch out arms, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Is that a good answer? Praise God. Looking over into Mark, the 16th chapter, great verses of the Bible, beginning in verse 15, the words of Jesus, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken of them, he was received up into heaven and sat in the right hand of God. Right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Shall we bow our heads in, in prayer? Lord, with grateful hearts, we bow before you. Great God, Lord and Savior, our Master, we thank you, Lord, that you've condescended to come and be in our midst this morning. We ask, Lord, that you'll give direction in this service. We know, Lord, that in man there is no good thing. And we are not sufficient in ourselves how we lean upon you, depend upon you. And we pray, Lord, that you will speak far beyond the words of man. Speak unto every heart here today. Minister to us. And we thank you for a touch of love. We thank you for renewed faith. We might believe you for great and mighty things. And we give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. We're living in the last day. I don't think there's any dispute among that among any people. We're living in the end of time, and it's a day of unbelief. A day, like the Bible said, when there will be many scoffers and mockers. They say the days of miracles are over. They have ceased. Uh, miracles died out with the apostles way back there. They're, they're gone. God doesn't answer prayer today. God doesn't heal the sick today. People don't speak in tongues today. That's, that's foolishness. That's all in the past. They don't believe in the supernatural. Uh, any more. There's some people that even say they believe in the Bible, believe in God, but yet they don't believe in in the miraculous uh, today. But really and truly, if, if you believe in God, you believe in the supernatural. Because everything about our God is supernatural. He is a supernatural God. The only way he works is through the supernatural. He is a God of the miraculous. Everything that he does is in a, the realm of the uh, supernatural. Everything that he is is supernatural. All of his works. He's a supernatural God. And so if we believe in God, we must believe in the supernatural because God specializes in the impossibility. <laughs> he, he's a specialist. <laughs> Praise God. In those things, think thought impossible. When things get too hard, when you come to a dead end, when you don't know which way to turn, when you've tried everything and there's nothing left yet to try, there's no way to turn, nothing more to do. That's when God steps in. <laughs> Praise God. He specializes in those impossible uh, situations in your life. When you've tried it all and you've gone to all the help you can find, there's no, no help left. Then you turn to God there at that point sometimes, and God comes in the scene and performs a miracle. That's why he says to us this morning, Sister Alice, is there anything too hard for God? <laughs> Amen. Brother Zalstrand, is there anything too hard for me, says the Lord? And Jeremiah says, oh, Lord, you made the heaven, you made the earth. Anybody that can breathe a word out and speak.
speak a word, and there comes the moon, there comes stars, and there comes the glorious, incredible heaven brought into existence by the breath of his mouth. Anybody that can do that can do anything. <laughs> Anybody that can make a heaven and earth and the sun and the moon, if he can do that, he can sure solve your little problem. He can sure mend your physical frame, praise God. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord. The Lord doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it back there, he could still do it today. He doesn't lie. He's not like men that wants to do a lot of things and says he's going to do a lot of things and ends up doing nothing. Uh, that's not the kind of a God that we serve. He's a trustworthy God. He's a God of the impossible, praise God. And they went forth, said the Bible, and they preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them, confirming, confirming the word with signs fouls. And then, and then these signs shall foul them that believe, praise God. There's got to be that faith, there's got to be that reaching out. If we dare to believe, then God will work with us with signs fouls. We used to sing a little chorus that went something like this, expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle when you pray. If you expect it, God will find a way to perform a miracle for you today. Praise God. Amen. Don't you think that's a good one to sing? And don't you think it's even better for us to practice that? We ask these folks that don't believe in miracles today, why is it that God performed miracles way back there in Bible days and he doesn't do it today? And they will always tell us, well, way back there in Bible days there were so many unbelievers that God had to perform miracles in order to confirm his word. You see, that's why they had miracles back there, but not today. But brother, sister, if there was ever a day of unbelief, of scoffers and mockers, a day when the word needs to be confirmed, it's today just like back there, praise God. If he did it back there for that reason, then he'll do it today for the same reason, amen. Praise God to confirm his word. Hallelujah. Every believer needs to move in that realm of the supernatural. Praise God. To begin to exercise our faith, not just at the church, not just the elders of the church, but every believer, every believer, every mother, every dad, every young person, every boy, every girl, begin to, to exercise your faith, begin to practice your faith. Praise God. On the little things and bigger things and daily, daily things, begin to exercise faith and begin to move into a, a supernatural realm where you can pray and mountains are being moved. Praise God. Can you say amen? Praise God because he's a God of the supernatural. He wants us to raise in that plane of the supernatural. But you say, Brother Smith, I don't understand those things. I don't understand divine healing. I don't understand how it works. I don't understand faith. I, I don't understand uh, how God sanctifies. I don't understand prayer. I don't understand all the, those, those things. And so I just uh, just stay away from them because I don't understand them. You know, I pray for this, pray for, uh, for uh, sometimes for something, and God gives it to me the next time he does it. And we pray for the sick, and sometimes they get healed, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes it's so easy, and sometimes it's so hard. And I just can't figure it all out, and so I'm just going to stay away from it because I don't understand it. It's like a little old boy, some five- or six-year-old youngster, and he's looking up at his dad, and he says, Dad, uh, 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 I don't believe in you because I don't understand you. I ask you sometimes, you say yes, and sometimes you say no, and, and you say all kinds of things I don't understand. You do, kind of, do things that I don't understand, and because I don't understand you, then I don't believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that's, just about, that's just about the way we are with God. You know, we'll never understand God. <laughs> we'll never understand all the things of God. Great is the mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. There will always be an air of mystery about our God. If you understood everything about God and divine healing and the supernatural and prayer, if you understand all those things, you would be equal to God. You'd be a God yourself, and you'll never obtain under that. So be satisfied where you are. Amen. You'll never have to figure it all out. You don't have to understand it. All you need to realize is that it works if you just believe and have faith. Praise God. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. There's a lot of things in this world that you don't understand and that you use. You know, look, look at the radio. You know, we, we, we make a radio broadcast here in, in Corpus Christi, and they hear it over in, in Dallas, Texas. And a little bit further, it goes all the way out in, to the mountains of Arkansas. 
And at the same time I speak here, they're hearing me over the mountains of Arkansas. They're hearing not someone else, they're hearing me, uh, my voice, at the very split second. And across all the United States, or down into Mexico, all around they get, while I'm speaking here to the radio, people are hearing all here, there, and the other, that very, and I can't figure that out. I don't understand that. In fact, I don't believe that. That's not possible. How, that, I, how could that be possible? How could I be talking here and someone could hear me halfway around the world? No, that just isn't possible. That isn't reasonable. There's nothing reasonable. I can't figure that out. Manuel, have you ever figured that out? <laughs> Even electricity, I haven't figured it out yet. It just doesn't seem like it, it just doesn't seem reasonable that it should work the way that it does. But the fact is, it works. And so we might as well use it even though we don't understand it, praise God. And there's a lot of things in this whole world that we may not understand all in detail, but we use them, and so it is. With the power of prayer, the mighty miracle-working power of our God, and these signs shall follow them that believe, praise God. As we believe, we're going to see the working, mighty power of our God. What are the signs that will follow them believe? Verse 17 says, they shall cast out devils. Starts right out with that. Oh, I don't believe in any devil. No, sir. I don't believe in demons and devils and all those those things. How do you know there's a real devil? Did you ever see one? Huh? The scoffers, the unbelievers? Well, I believe in the devil because the Bible says so, and that's good enough for me. Praise God. I haven't seen him, and I'm not, a, not wanting to see him. <laughs> Tell you too. I'm not wanting to shake his hand. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Someone says, well, I know there's a real devil because I see so many of his little children around. There must be a papa devil somewhere. <laughs> I, I think that makes pretty good sense, don't you? <laughs> there's just a lot of little devils around, a lot of little people that are possessed with a big devil. All kinds of people that are in all kinds of devilment. They live worse life than dogs. Animals, they're lower than animals. They're full of the devil. Fellow that strangled some 14 different women and with no reason or cause or purpose behind it. He wasn't a bit insane, but he was possessed of the devil. Doing inhuman things because they're driven by the powers of demons. We are living a day where there's a revival of witchcraft and spiritism and demonology in our midst. We have one university. Uni university in, uh, at least one in our country that I know of that support with our tax money, the money that we give to our government that are training and educating and giving a degree in witchcraft. A college that's putting out little wizards and witches. Demonology. Can you imagine how low? It's time that we start casting out some devils, folks. Amen. That's what I'm saying. It's time. We start resisting some devils. And they shall cast out devils. Some time ago in Guatemala, I remember that they brought a young lady to us, some 18 or 19 years of age. Her name was Thelma. Her mother was a spiritist, fortune teller for some 10 years at Thelma had been brought up in that kind of a home and that kind of condition, playing around in it, involved in it. And that girl became possessed with the devil, with demons. And at times uncontrollable, out of her head, doing insane things, almost inhuman. And they had taken her to doctors and uh, to the priests and other places where they thought they might find some help for this demon-possessed girl, but there was none. And they brought Thelma to uh, one of our evening services on a Friday night, if I remember correctly. And she acted perfectly normal uh, for the uh, season in the service. But when the Spirit of the Lord began to move and the power of God was manifested, the Spirit of righteousness was being manifested in our midst. That's what the devil does man. Whenever God works, you know the devil's always going to try to work. And he gets mad. And he got mad and took possession of that girl. And before we knew it, she was laying on the floor. And her body was jiving back and forth like a serpent, up and down. It's awful noise and hideous 
faces that she was making just like a snake. Uncontrollable, or out of her mind. Demons possessing her, taking over. And I think if that probably happened to in the States, we'd all <laughs> pack up our bag and run out <laughs> and wonder what, what's going on. But these young people in Guatemala had seen much of this demonology. And they knew what to do. And they grabbed their black Bibles and made a circle around her, the young fellows and the girls, and started praying. And they grabbed a whole those scriptures and rebuked the devil. And one after another, they'd read those scriptures out loud and begin praying for her and rebuking the evil spirits. And they prayed and sought God. And before long, she just became relaxed. And you could see that her mind came back again. And she stood to her feet. And she'd been delivered from the demons, praise God. And Thelma never, from that day on, never had another attack. Perfectly normal. Because it took the power of God to cast those devils out of her. And Thelma went on to become a lovely Christian and went to our Bible school and out passing the church of the boondocks and going on strong for God today because there were people there that got hold of the throne of God and the power of God and cast the demons out of her. These signs will follow them to believe. But how, how do people get possessed with devils? How do they go so far? You know how people get possessed with devils? By playing with sin. By yielding to temptation. By tolerating evil. By having a, a uh, tolerant spirit towards evil things that come in their lives. By entertaining wickedness by holding on to sinful habits in their life. When, when Satan first comes, he comes to tempt. And if he yield to temptation, then he'll come to oppress. And if you keep yielding to that oppression of the devil before long, he will invade you and he will possess you. Now that's just how it happens here every, every time. Sometimes he uses drugs. Sometimes he uses alcohol. Sometimes he uses tobacco. Sometimes he uses a lying spirit or a stealing spirit or evil surmising spirit or an angry spirit or a worrying spirit or a fearful spirit or a jealousy or hatred or lust. We have tens of thousands of Americans, women as well as men, that are actually possessed by the spirit of lust. That's all they think of. That's all they think of day and night. It drives them on and on and on. Lust, gossiping, fault finding. The devil uses all these spirits and he will tempt you. And you get in that temptation, then he will oppress you with it. And you keep yielding to that oppression. Before long, he will captivate you and possess your body, soul, and mind. And then the only thing, the only help for you is to be cast that devil out, that evil spirit out of you to be free from. People play with things they ought not to play with. They hold those skeletons in the closets that they ought to got rid of a long time ago. And you play with it, sin and the devil, he'll take over. You have things in your life that you're tolerating that's not pleasing to God, it's time that you get the old broom out and have a house cleaning. <laughs> you need to have spring house cleaning right now in the winter time. I heard a fellow recently that he said he had a varmint under his house and uh, kept bothering him and he kept talking about the varmint under the house and and he the food the garbage thrown out and the varmint was good he was feeding his garment his varmint <laughs> he was uh, uh, tolerating his varmint he just let him in there and and, uh, and he'd talk about it and he'd feed it and he didn't like it but he just left it there it, it turned out to be a, a skunk under his house, and I said, fellow, if you don't get rid of that guy pretty soon, you're going to have a whole family of them. <laughs> you're going to have one more than one, one skunk. You're going to have a whole bunch of stinkers around there. And they just keep multiplying because you tolerate one, you're going to have more. I said, it's about time you, you get down to business and get rid of him because if you don't get him, he's going to get you. <laughs> and the same is true with sin in our life. If we tolerate a little, It'll multiply. If we don't get it, it'll get you. 
That's how people get possessed with evil spirits. And the Bible says that they shall speak with new tongues. You know, the tongue is such a wayward member of our body, James tells us, it's the unruly one. It's the hard to control member. When we baptize them in water, the last member that goes under is this big nose. That nose is pretty unruly sometimes. You get pretty nosy. But when you baptize with the Holy Ghost, the last member that goes under is not the nose, but it's the tongue. Because really, that's the unruly member of the body. And when God gets control of your tongue, he's got you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. That's the last member to yield holy and completely to God. If you're still a gossiping Christian, then you're not yielding to God and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're still a fault-finding, grumbling Christian and saying things you ought not to say, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. The tongue is under the control of God's spirit, and that's what he wants of us. Hallelujah. That tongue is so unruly that, you know, sometimes it's so hard to tame and so hard to control that sometimes even, even when you get everything else under control, like you're sound asleep at night and your head is sleeping, your ears are sleeping, your feet are sleeping, and your hands are sleeping, and everything's sleeping and just quietly at peace, sleeping, and your tongue goes right on talking in its sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it is to control. But when you believe, when you believe these signs shall follow them that believe, they'll speak in new tongues, controlled by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You know, I never cease the wonder of, of when a person is baptized in the Holy Ghost and he speaks with, with a heavenly language. Miracle, miracle. I studied Spanish over a thousand hours and I still can't speak Spanish. Can you imagine that? You've got to be awful dense <laughs> to work that hard in something and not be able to grasp it. <laughs> I'll just make that confession. But my old tongue, I say, speak Spanish and it speaks English. <laughs> it just wants to keep my eye on doing what it's always done. Shame on it. But that's the way it is. It's just, it's just a bad one to get under complete control. But I've seen little children, seven and eight years of age, come down to this very altar and the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come upon them and in a moment's time they start speaking a language they never know beautiful tongues again and again and again they'll speak with new tongues one of our fellow workers from Guatemala was holding meetings in Mexico some time ago and there was a Jewish man that came to those meetings and gave his heart to the Lord. And in the process of the service, this brother, this young fellow, began to speak in other tongues. Tongue he never knew, anointed by the Holy Spirit. And this Jewish man came up to him afterwards. He said, where did you learn to speak that language? He said, what language is that? He said, you're speaking a very rare Jewish language, Giddish language that's only spoken in Israel. You're speaking it perfectly. He said, I don't know a word of it. And this Jewish man was so amazed and so shocked at this boy speaking this perfect, rare Jewish language that he began worshiping God and the Jewish man received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues too. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that just like the Lord? That's one of the signs in this last day. They're speaking in new tongues. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues, young and old. Years ago, I remember going down to the valleys of Ohio, and my wife and I went to, in the, in the, when, and uh, conducted a, a revival meeting there. The first service we had, there was only seven out, <laughs> seven in attendance. It was either four women and three children or, or, or four children and three women, I forget. But the, all the women were all, I think there was three women, elderly women and four children. And all these women were up close to their 70s. And uh, uh, they were saved, but never filled with the Holy Ghost. And God began moving there, and we had probably a hundred folk that got saved in that revival. And we went on another week, and some 50 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. 
And all these young people, teenagers and young people and young married couples, they were coming in and getting saved and getting filled with the Holy Ghost. The altar was just filled with them, praising God, worshiping the Lord in the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues. And here's my three faithful elderly ladies, and they're sitting on the front row just watching and looking. And they finally said, Brother Smith, how come all these young people and these children got the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and we can't speak in tongues? <laughs> they were they were the they were the foundation there and, they, and everybody was getting the Holy Ghost but them and they they were wondering what was going on. Everybody received the Holy Ghost but them. I said, sister, just press in and just stay a little bit longer. Just stay to God. And I watched those elderly sisters, and before long, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and those old false teeth of theirs just started chattering. <laughs> Amen. And I watched false teeth chatter for a while, staggering lips, the Bible says, staggering lips and false teeth of chattering, and then other tongues, and they received the Holy Ghost too, praise God. Because this is for the young and for the old, it's for all. These signs will follow them. That believe. Do you believe that? Amen. And verse 18 says, And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The power is not in the hands, nor is the power in the sick, but the power is in our God. Hallelujah. It rests there when our faith is up there, no matter what that sickness might be, whether those hands are callous or smooth, black or white, it makes no difference. Young or old, the power is up there when we have faith. God will still heal the sick. Praise Oh, God, there's nothing too hard for thee. Hallelujah. He's a God of the whole man. He's concerned about you and your every need. It was on July 26, 1976. Years ago, I first went into Guatemala. I remember sitting the, the tent up in a community they said was hard and callous. And God began to move. And night after night, the crowds grew, and God poured out his spirit in that revival meeting. And on July 26, I preached from this text. I wrote it down. <laughs> and when I finished the message, it was like a cloud of God's glory broke over that tent on a Monday night, if you please. On a Monday night while the devil was having hangovers and headaches, we were having the glory of God on a Monday night. About a thousand people under the gospel tent, God's glory came down. I saw the folk come, being mightily healed by the power of God. Some 13 or more got saved, and three or four received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but people were being healed one side or the other without even laying hands on. Just God came and visited and faith reached out. God performed the miracle. Hallelujah. And there was one young lady I remember in particular. She was in her teens or late teens and she had very bad heart trouble. Nigh unto death. She needed a new heart. But she had spiritual heart trouble too. Without God, without peace, without salvation. Even worse than the physical. And that night when the glory came, she reached out by faith. God touched her, saved her soul, gave her a new heart, healed her body, gave her a new physical heart, hallelujah, made her perfectly whole, and on top of that, God filled her with the Holy Ghost, praise God, saved her, healed her, and filled her with the Holy Ghost in one evening, praise God. I talk, you talk about miracles, hallelujah. Those are the kind of miracles that I like to see happen, and those are the kind of miracles that will happen if we have faith to believe him because he's the God of the whole man, the body, the soul, the spirit. He'll save your soul. He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit, and he will heal your body. Praise God. Because these signs will follow them that believe. God still performing miracles. We hear about man's great inventions, these powerful things that he's inventing, powerful guns, powerful bombs, powerful rockets, powerful machines. Most all that men invent are for destruction, so they've almost come to the place to destroy themselves, the whole world. But there's a greater power on earth than all the inventions of man and that power is the power of prayer. It's
itself is a means to a miracle. An infidel was given a speech, a lecture one time, and the title of his lecture was this, Why I Don't Believe in Prayer. And when he finished his little talk, he said, Can anyone tell me that God still answers prayer? And there was a silence I broke over that audience for a moment. Then a big, tall, robust man stood to his feet. And with frail language, he began to speak. And he said to that audience, I was a drunker. I was a wife beater. I abused my child. I was a worthless human being. I was good for nothing. A drunkard. And he said, one day, I came home early, unexpected, and I slipped in my house in the front door, and I stood by the stairway and I heard voices from my bedroom. It was my wife, and she was talking to someone, and I listened very intently. And I heard the voice of a little child, my little daughter, and she was saying, Dear Jesus, Save my daddy. Save my daddy. And then I heard another voice. It was my wife, and she was saying, Amen. Dear Jesus, please answer that prayer. He said, That was all that I could take, and I slipped out of the house and down the street as fast as I could go to get as far away from that voice as I could. But I kept hearing that little voice speaking, saying, save my daddy, save my daddy. And the further I went, and the faster I went to run and to flee, the louder I heard it. The little voice, save my daddy, save my daddy. And at last he said, right on the street corner, I fell on my knees. I cried out. I said, yes, God, answer that prayer. And he did. And he did. And he changed my life, the man said. He gave me a new home, and he gave me a new life. And I don't drink anymore, and I'm not angry anymore, and I don't beat my wife anymore, I don't mistreat my children anymore. And I have peace in my heart, I have happiness. I'm a new person. God's given me a new life. I'm a new man, he said. Yes, he said. I can say, God answers prayer. And he sat down. And there was hardly a dry eye in that whole audience. And I want to say to you this morning, yes, God still answers prayer. He still saves the lost. He still breaks sinful habit. He still heals the sick. He still filled with the Holy Ghost. He has a miracle for you today. These signs will follow them that believe. Shall we pray? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be God. Every head is bowed and our eyes closed. We stand in this church house in the presence but Almighty God, who made the heavens and earth, is there anything too hard? No, Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. You can meet our need, just the need that we have this morning. May we have faith to believe you. We're reaching out, Lord. We're reaching out to you. 
we ask that you will perform that miracle that's needed in our life right now. Right now. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, and we'll talk to the Lord. Everyone's praying all over this congregation. And you've listened so well. You've been so good. The youngsters listen so well. I appreciate that. The presence of the Lord manifested. Will you reach out by faith? Say, Lord, I need a miracle in my home. I need a miracle in my life. There's things in my life that I want change. And I know you can do it. I need a miracle in my body. Friends, there are some who believe for financial miracles. They believe for physical miracles. They believe for healing miracles. They believe for material miracles. They can believe for most any miracles except the miracle of a changed life, except the miracle of a, a sanctified life. And I declare to you this morning that God who heals the body can also heal the soul. The God who answers prayer for your material possessions can also answer prayer for your spiritual needs, the habits in your life. God's here to deliver you, to set you free, to sanctify your life, to help you live after righteousness. He'll do that. He'll do that. You say, Brother Smith, I'd like to be saved, but I can't live the life. I realize that, my friend. I'm with you. I cannot live a life. None of us can live a life. But it's Christ in us. The hope of glory. It's Christ in us. His life lives through us. I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ that strengthens me. By faith, you can be saved. By faith, you can live for God. By faith, you can make heaven your home. There's nothing too hard for our God. I wonder how many of you here this morning, you say, Brother Smith, I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my life. Would you raise your hand just now and make it known to the Lord? Yes, I see hands going up all over this congregation. Real quickly, hands going up. Yes, way in the back, hands going up. I need a miracle. Yes, I need a miracle. Maybe it's you personally. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your household. You know, God knows, you need something to happen, something special, something wonderful, something supernatural. Maybe you've come to the end of your way. You don't know which way to turn. Oh, turn to God this morning. You can have your miracle today. You may put your hand down. I wonder if there are those who are not saved, you're not sure all is well between God and your soul. And you'd like to know that you're ready to meet the master. You need to be saved. Would you raise your hand, lift it up real quickly? We're coming to the closing moments of this hour of prayer. The most important time of your life, maybe, where you can meet God. I may lift your hand and say, do pray for me. I want to be sure all is well between God and my soul. Never let a gospel message pass you by without a response to it. You will be held accountable. God speaks through human lips this morning. He speaks to you. What is your answer? Would you say yes to God? Would you yield to God? What is your response? May it be a positive response to a God of mercy. Yes, Lord. I will do your will. This is our opportunity to meet God at the altar of prayer. Our time slips by so quickly, and I'm conscious of that. But I feel God's dealing and moving. I'm going to open these altars that we can touch God. And I'd like for everyone to slip out and find a place of prayer. You need special healing. You need a special miracle, a special deliverance. I'd like for you to be the very first, and I'd like for you to slip right down right, real close to the altar. When you're here kneeling or standing at this altar, I'll know you need a special prayer. 
And then I'd like for everyone, young and old, to meet God. Let's all stand together, and as we sing, let's all find a place of prayer. Let's all meet God. Let's all let our faith go out. Let's all exercise our faith and believe God for his miracle. Sing it as we come. Oh, let me. Everyone come, everyone come, everyone come. Meet God, kneel at the altar, come and pray, seek God, lift up your heart to the Lord. Amen. Listen.